this is just to update everybody what's going on with UPS. This is huge if if they go to strike and understand the union leadership will be trying to avoid a strike. Union leadership is not on the side of the rank and file when it comes to going on strike. They are the ones put there to try to no. Let's calm everything down. Let's try to let's try to resolve this without going on a strike, even if it means shoving down or or trying to sell the rank and file a terrible tentative agreement. But let's listen to the latest, uh, and this kind of sums up everything here. Three hundred forty thousand UPS workers are closer to walking off their jobs. The Teamsters Union and UPS walked away without a deal this week after marathon contract negotiations to avoid a strike. They went nowhere. And if an agreement is not reached by the end of the month, those distinctive brown trucks could be in their tracks, stopped in their tracks, I should say. Uh, a strike could have major economic consequences since mm. about 6% of GDP moves Six. on wow. UPS trucks. Here's the mm. Teamsters president before talks broke down. Concede to our demands to give us what we deserve, and we will go out there and ratify this agreement. Or they can take the other road, where they don't concede to our demands. They stay loyal to Wall Street and forget about Main Street. Teamsters President Sean O'Brien is with us now. Sir, good to have you. Uh, first, how far apart are you two? We made significant progress since January. Uh, we were down to economics, and we thought we would have a deal around 4.15 a.m. yesterday morning. But UPS uh, quite boldly told us there was no more to give. We were focused on the part-time portion of the UPS workers who uh, work. You know, the part-time poverty doesn't work for us and Teamsters anymore. So we were fighting hard to take care of the part-timers, and UPS said we don't have any more to give, and that was it. You made some progress on uh, the MLK holiday. You made some progress on air conditioning for new vehicles, other things as well. But when you say the economics, what are you asking for and what won't they give? Uh, give me more about what the gap is here. Look, there's a, there's a gap. There's no doubt that the UPS full-timers uh, make good wages, good benefits. But what people don't know in, in the neighborhoods, they see their UPS driver and they love him, love him or her and they're happy. But they don't see the unsung heroes, the single mothers that go to work at 4 in the morning. Those trucks don't go out unless they are loaded. And our part-timers, the unsung heroes, they are working for poverty wages and we need to drive up the starting rates of pay and reward those people that made supply chain solution happen uh, during the pandemic. And UPS made record profits, 100 billion. They need to share some of that. They're focused on rewarding Wall Street. They should focus on rewarding Main Street. Those are the men and women who make them a success, 340,000 of them. You're talking about those drivers and the preloaders. Um, I have several truck drivers in my family, so I, I know the work. L let me ask you about this. You talked about the, they're being uh, well compensated. Um, you uh, acknowledged in your Senate testimony that the starting salary for some of those drivers, $93,000 a year, uh, at the top of the industry. So people who are at home hearing that UPS might be, the workers might be going on strike, and they're already at the top of the heap starting for this. It's pretty disgusting. I, had, I was waiting mm -hmm. until it just got to where I couldn't take it no more. It's pretty disgusting, this piece of shit coon right here. <laughs> and that's, what, that's what he is here for. If you see right. a black face... In mm -hmm. a conversation, he is placed there in, for a particular reason, because it wouldn't be the same thing if this was a white face, a white male face, given the same interview. So this guy is here to attack labor, to make yeah. labor seem like you guys just want a lot of stuff. Lot more. When, right. the point, when the point is this, this is what capitalists do. You have, oh. Oh, all the full time workers, you make all of this. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to make the majority of our workforce part time. They're not going to get this because they're not full time. And the part time people, we're going to pay a quarter of what these this large salary that he's bringing up. And that's what is happening here. He is trying to make it seem like you guys are making ninety three, ninety five thousand a year. Most people don't make that, and we're looking at right. that. But that's not the vast majority of the people. It's exactly, the part -time like, workers that's making UPS go. Go ahead, Colin. You want to no? Exactly that. Like he didn't ask how much are the part time people earn. He didn't ask that. 
but he went right to the idea of like, oh, like the top people, like upwards of upwards of yes, ninety three. That doesn't mean everyone is making ninety. And I remember that was the same mess that they were doing for the railroad workers as well. They go went up to the extreme yes salary when most most like especially for me being a teacher, like I know this. Most people are not making that extreme amount. It, it, it's definitely way less than that. So the question really should have been, how much are, what's the median, what's the average? Or like even for these part-time workers, how much are they getting that you're not, that, that you're determining is not enough? So, but yeah, like, and most people are going to miss that, but it's the idea of like, that's the trick that they use to kind of give the sentiment of, oh, these bastards are asking for way too much. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't deserve- Why isn't the frame, like, why isn't the framing, wow, you guys only want that and UPS is not giving you that? What is wrong with UPS? What, do they want us to, do they want to affect our GDP over this little thing you guys are asking? It's not framed that way, it's always right. framed. Are you guys really and want to I do would this argue, with the economy in this? Yeah, go ahead. And, and I argue, you know, the idea that we're talking about a 15 minimum, 15, is not even, and like, shout out to Savvy for this because she broke it down on the stream she did last week, this past week. But the average living wage, <laughs> if you were to do it by the hour, mm -hmm. for most states is around 25 minimum. So, so the idea that, you know, like, even if it's, if they're saying, you know, like upwards of 90K a year, okay. Like what's, to me, what's so wrong with that? You always start with, especially when you negotiate, you always ask for the extreme and work your way down from there. Mm -hmm. So the Let me idea, tell you, 93,000 in California, that's not that much. Right. So where are they I will living, probably, that's not I that much. Say this, I'll be very transparent. Like I make about, I make slightly more than that here in DC. That doesn't cover, that barely covers for me, you know, like my living expenses and all my bills and all that kind of stuff. So like depending where you are, you know, right. 93 is not really that much relatively in this day and age, especially given inflation right now. So, you know, but the idea that this bastard was like upwards of 93, can you tell us what the lowest, can you ask what the lowest <laughs> salaries are to get some context, please? I, I would like to see them I think there should be a requirement that anybody who talks about labor issues on on a, a show like this, the union leader and the pundit or whatever host should have their salaries posted under their names <laughs> when they have these conversations. Right. You know, like I want to know uh, what and by well, they're both very high. Union leadership makes a ton of money, and the people on these mm -hmm. on CNN and all that and Fox, all they're, they're making tons of cash. And why does it matter? Their perspective, you know, if you haven't had to make the tough decision of should I pay the doctor bill or or sh you know do I buy clothes for my kids for school for September? If you haven't made that or haven't made it in a long time, you don't really get what's going on. And uh, you know, I saw there there are recent, I mean, past six months, studies showing most Americans, including most Republicans, believe the minimum wage should be somewhere between like $22 and $26 an hour or more. That's most Americans. You can't get most Americans to agree it's raining. Most Americans think it should be over 20 and we still have these clowns in the Democratic Party talking about 15. We're done with 15. We demand 30. We settle for 25 and not incrementally over three or five years. Now, um, I I think I would like to see some solidarity between the Writers Guild workers, who I completely support, and this strike. I would like to see cross-union mm -hmm. support. We didn't see it for the rail workers. Okay. Let's move forward. Here's your opportunity now. Writers Guild on strike, we support you. Stand up and say you support UPS workers. Right. But there's 
Anthony, there's going to be an issue there because I reported on this um, a couple of weeks ago, and I and then, like it's difficult for that solidarity now when union leadership in many industries have already endorsed Biden already. Yeah, that's but, what makes it. Yeah. That's what makes it extremely difficult. Like the teachers' union has already endorsed Biden. The nurses' union has already endorsed Biden. So really, right now, like. Like, it furiates me that something like this, and they already gave that endorsement, to right. me is a slap in the face, and it kind of undermines what UPS workers are doing here. And looking at the graphic underneath, and I'm sure these are the part-time part um, workers, they only want $5 more an hour. Five. That's... And you can't even do that? Five dollars an hour, better health care and retirement benefits. That to me seems more than reasonable. If anything, I would argue you should ask for more than five. But right. whatever. And it's not that they can't afford it, it's just that they go scorched earth. They'll it's like the NRA will never even agree to a reasonable gun law because in their mind, slippery sloped, it's gonna get worse. Whatever, they're idiots. Same thing with these companies. And same thing with the Democrats and Republicans. We don't want to give the people anything because we give them something. They know, oh, you can give mm -hmm. me something. They'll ask for more. And maybe, and I think you're right, Colin, absolutely on the money with the whole thing about the union leadership. But that doesn't mean rank and file can't speak up. And right. this is where true organizing happens. You know, as we push out the duopoly, we need to push out union leadership of that. You know, there's there's some good union leadership out there, but not these guys. Right. And uh, there needs to be I want to see rank and file Hollywood writers who are being interviewed stand up and say, I support the UPS workers. I, that that to me, like I know the idea of a general strike, everyone. It, it, it sounds great. I, I think it's a great idea. But in reality, I think it happens where there's a connection between one strike and another and then another and then another. Mm -hmm. And we just yeah. have to have these conversations. So like with your labor summit, glad you guys are doing it and putting the work in for it. It would be wonderful to see that, to see representatives. I would love to see a WGA Writers Guild person on here and hear what we have to say and hear what a UPS worker has to say and maybe get a rail worker. Uh, anyway, I got to bow out. Um, yes. I wanted what, to what can people find you? Any last words, sir? Go ahead. Oh, God, I hope they're not. Um, yes. Uh, Twitter, at Anthony Zankis. Uh, or just put in Prop Zankis and you'll get me. And, um, you know, I just want to thank you all for um, for the, g giving the deep dive and the, and the recurring time to Dr. West. I think that's so helpful and wonderful that he has offered to continue to do that. It's incredible. Um, and I, I would love to see Dr. West hit Trump country. I'd love to see him go to East Palestine, Ohio, which has been abandoned by both parties, and talk to those people whose lives have been ruined by industry, capitalism, and a negligent government. So I'm looking forward to that and all the solidarity work you're doing. And Colin, it was great being on a panel with you. Appreciate it, sir.